Hey YouTube, uh, it's Freedom Voice again. I want to do another video. This is going to be part two of the uh, subject of uh, is it Morgellons disease or is it nanotechnology? Uh, in the first in the first uh, video, we talked about and I showed this uh, study. This is actually a peer review study done back in 2012 on the subject of Morgellons disease. And we showed you how fibers and the figures there were coming out of individual skin. And then I showed you uh, my experience and documentation for four years, actually the last four years, of how I, I've been experiencing the same thing. And I have extensive, extensive evidence on in my own experience of uh, this going on for quite a pe period of time. And I do believe it originated from this. Now, I'm not going to say this, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sort of mirror a video that was shot back in 2019 by a lady by the name of Dana Ashley. She has a YouTube channel and she talks about this. She talks about its origin. She talks about uh, a lot of important things. But in this one particular video that I'm going to mirror here, uh, she goes she goes into an interview with a gentleman by the name of Terrell. And I've spoken with Terrell myself, but he seems to be very knowledgeable on this subject. And I've also spoken with Dana and uh, got permission to mir mirror this video. So this video is being mirrored by with permission from Dana Ashley. Hello, YouTube family. It is me, Miss Dana Ashley. Today, gonna have a video that's a little different than the rest because as you probably already know, YouTube is really clamping down on content that they deem to be... See that? See that, you guys? Yep, they don't like that stuff. As well as content that comes from that book. Yeah, so if you know my channel, you already know that pretty much wipes me out. So today I'm gonna to be taking a very careful approach on this particular video and how I have to go about sharing this info with you. I hope it's not too annoying, but it has to be done. What am I talking about? Here's what we know about the suppression rounds that are happening right now. It's just an algorithm. It's not people, you know, it's just, it's a program. So when the words come out of my mouth, an auto caption is created and makes a script of it. So the words inside that script are what trigger the different levels of suppression. They don't like the words, you go down. They don't like my words. They don't like a lot of my words. So why I said I hope I'm not annoying today is because today with this particular video, I'm going to be cutting out the words that could probably get me flagged. So when I blot out a word that you may need to know, I'm gonna make this sound, and then you can look at your screen and it will be written out so you don't miss it. Here's some of the words they really are not going to like about this video today. You see that? Don't like those, no, no, no. Here's some more. Oh yeah, those are naughty, naughty words. Okay, so <laughs> let's practice. The main topic in this video is involving a very dark and very sick plan against you and me that is involving these and these. Yeah, okay, great, you got this. So the most important aspect of this video, the whole reason why I'm doing it is because there is one amazingly simple and cheap and effective thing you can be doing to protect yourself from these. Fantastic. So today we won't be saying those words, but we're gonna be talking about what the heck they're really doing with them without actually saying the word, which is gonna be fun. I learned since filming this intro that far more people are familiar with the existence of the first image I showed you than the second of the HAARP facilities. So here from the mouth of Bob McCoy, the director of Geophysical Institute admits openly is the purpose of these facilities. Before we continue, I just wanna kind of make known that I'm gonna be popping in to kind of react to this video from time to time. Uh, certain things that I think are very important, especially how it relates to my experience, what I've been experiencing. But I want you to notice in this next segment, uh, some of the words that are being used. Uh, you'll see words like experiment being used over and over. This facility was built by the Air Force about 20 years ago uh, to study the ionosphere, to, to do active experiments in the ionosphere. The ionosphere is a layer uh, that surrounds the, surrounds the Earth. It's important for a lot of things like 
satellite communication, any, any kind of radio signals that pass through the ionosphere are affected by the ionosphere. Each of these trailers you see around me have uh, transmitters in them. The transmitters feed power from the main building over there up into these, into these dipole antennas. Fundamentally what this is about is, is taking the ionosphere, turning it into a laboratory. We can do experiments. We, we can create bubbles. We can heat small sections. We can create waves. We can, we can excite uh, plasma resonances and do a lot of experiments. We can, we can transmit signals all around the world. And we can do experiments that no one else can do. It's a, it's a laboratory without walls. Now, if you're the kind of person, let's just back up and say this. If you're the kind of person who doesn't already believe or understand the fact that there's some stuff uh, being intentionally sprayed upon us, I understand. I felt that way myself in 2002 when I first heard about it. I get it. It's a disturbing thing to accept, but you might want to back up and just take a look at other videos on the topic, play a little catch up because this video is not going to compute. Okay, the fact is these things aren't condensation. Their existence has already been admitted within mainstream publications and by scientific weather mod scientists. It's been declassified. So they're claiming it's to help us, of course, fight that devil carbon. Wait, but you're made of carbon. Anyway, I digress. The point is, unless you realize they are real, just maybe back up, do a little more homework, because this is like level two. Okay, guys, some of the stuff we're going to be talking about here, it's crazy. I'll admit, it sounds crazy. Mind-bendingly so, but perhaps just keep an open mind until the end, until I give you that simple solution that we're talking about, so you can kind of have that in your back pocket, and so you may prevent this dystopian nightmare from growing roots inside your biology. I wish I were kidding. So I'm working on several videos right now. One being an interpretation of Daniel 2, Nebuchadnezzar's statue dream, unsealed. Very excited about it. It's just taking a lot of time. And another video I'm finishing is about these recent earthquakes that we just had in Southern California. So to round out my research, I had sought out a seismologist of sorts. This man has a genius Mensa brain. He was very well versed in earthquakes and he knows the triggers for them that the USGS isn't talking about. In fact, he had accurately predicted something unusual was going on right before July 4th and those two quakes that happened down here in Southern California. And I did feel them, by the way. So I'm talking to him about that, and then he laid out this crazy piece of information right in my lap, which is the topic of this video. So to give you some background, about seven years ago, this man had assembled a team of over 300 people, scientists, physicists, doctors, lawyers, think tank people, to prepare research alongside another man whose name I will not be saying. But all you need to know is that, according to this guy, he had built hundreds of facilities all over the planet. Now, he and his research team were getting together daily for the purpose of officially disclosing the information behind these facilities and those streaks in the sky that we're all so sick of looking at. So the men who built these facilities knew not only what the sky streaks, we'll just call them that, see if that works, contained but how these particulates interact with human biology in conjunction with the facilities that he had built. So not long after, this team of researchers began having regular meetings and even radio programs where they began divulging this information. Suddenly, 13 members, 13 members of his team and his personal family were attacked and many lost their lives. This is no joke. He lost his own mother, multiple cousins and others who weren't taken out came down with this sudden mystery virus leading to the immediate need of heart surgery. Many of these folks died within weeks, some within days, but all of them together within the same couple week period of time. Totally disbanded the group. They got what they wanted. But most importantly, these men knew of a, this simple substance to counteract this technology, which is why I'm sharing this with you today, even though I'm sticking my neck out and, yeah, we're, we won't take that sentence any further. But anyway, his email disclosing this info with me shared how these 
size particulates grow into a predetermined diameter once they hit the hydrochloric acid of the human digestive tract? What? And he explained how these bots then have the capacity to move and communicate within the global frequency. And believe it or not, the craziest part is yet to come. You've seen the movie The Matrix, right? Well, it's more real than any of us want to consider. He claimed that the nano's ultimate purpose to create the bots inside the body is to collect all kinds of biological data from you. Just like a Fitbit can tell you your heart rate and whatever, these things are being used to create a simulated version of you right now. Hey guys, Freedom Voice here. I just wanted to uh, pop in and say that, you know, what she's saying here, it makes so much sense. Um, and it really, really begins to explain the experiences that I've had for the last five years. A lot of the evidence I'm posting on this channel, but as I'm listening to what she's saying and what Terrell is, is going to be saying next, uh, it all clearly makes sense in my mind. Uh, the, the, the individuals who are targeted, in my opinion, and I'm going to talk more about this at a later time, but I do believe that the individuals that are targeted are the ones that, for whatever reasons, they can't seem to activate uh, whatever type of uh, nanobot assembly in their bodies. I know that sounds really weird. I know it does. But there has to be a reason why individuals are targeted and others are not. And I, I'm not sure that I believe that the reason is because we're free thinkers. I'm not sure that that's the only reason. There has to be another reason. There has to be a reason why I'm seeing this spawning of these fibers all over my skin. And, and, and doctors don't seem to want to ex know what it is. They want to say that, uh, you know, I'm being delusional. No, I have too much evidence. So just try to follow what she's saying here. Apparently, there's some type of data that's being collected. And I think it goes in line with everything that we've been talking about as it relates to surveillance. They're not only surveilling us in society, but they're surveil surveilling under the skin. They're sur surveilling our body biological information as well to create sort of a sentient model of each person. And I do believe that that's what I'm seeing. You know, as I look at, as I showed in my last video, all the, 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 the evidence of something going on, you know, under the skin. I know that sounds really weird, really strange, but I, I have too much evidence. I can't discount this evidence. According to him, the data is being collected and is going from us to create a real world simulation of you. Apparently... They do this to keep an eye on who's causing the kind of ripples within our network of communication that puts their child elite plan in jeopardy. But down the road, the plan is to flip and let the bots do the controlling. I told you it sounded crazy. But anyway, he ended the email by saying, you might believe that the government is behind this, but the dupes in Washington are bumbling idiots compared to the elite and their mad scientists that are working under the Council of Relations working groups that run this AI-assisted real-world sim program. You might want to rethink your plan to expose this because that could put you on a list once the sim shows your hosts creating waves that threaten their program. So I followed up with him to arrange a talk, and the chat will make up the rest of this video. Now, I don't know how long I'm going to keep this video up here. Um, it's going to be here for a moment, at least for those with ears to hear and eyes to see. I pray that it gets to everyone who needs to see it. I'm probably going to try to keep it up on my P-A-T-R-E-O-N page, and then hope to have a website of my own up soon, so I can have all these things backed up there. Finally, <laughs> I'm obligated to say that this video is for entertainment purposes only. This is not medical advice. You should consider the following content a comedy and definitely not to be taken seriously. Seriously, that's what we have to do these days. Can you believe it? Crazy times. Anyway, I know it's annoying. We've lost our ability to speak freely, but my friends, 
I'm afraid it's only going to get worse and I want to last as long as I can so that I can keep my friends on YouTube in the know. This man, Terrell, whom we'll be interviewing in a moment, uh, is a very good man. You can find links to his work, his YouTube channel, and the newsletters that we're going to be speaking about in this chat in the description box. I certainly haven't looked into all of his work yet, but the topics we are discussing today I believe is quite valid, as is his work predicting earthquakes and the earth changes he is anticipating as well. So I hope you enjoy and that this serves you and your families well. So let me just pull up my questions. So by the way, wow, on your email, <laughs> I can't even believe what all you've been through. I mean, I can, but that was incredible in regards to your, um, you know, your team that you had and everything. I'm very sorry for what you went through, but I, I would assume that part of that you don't want to be shared or discussed in public, no? Or I'm not sharing my screen right now, right? Because I don't see. No, it no you're not. Okay, no, you're not. I was just making sure. Um, that's the topic that we can we can go through if you want to. I let people do that. We can go in anything you want, but I'm just warning you that you're going to be you're going to be uh, AI is going to be paying careful attention to identify threats, anything futuristic from what we're saying that could raise your threat level and my threat level and things like that. So, with the sodium, with what we're talking about is a nanofilament replication inhibitor. And what got me in trouble was working with the Institute. It wasn't because of Project Black Star that got me in trouble. What was the main goal of the Khan Institute? Uh, those are the people that specialize in Magellan's research. Oh. Things like that, which is uncontrolled replication of the silicone um, strands inside of people's body. So it's like for right. a silicone-based life form is what it is. I'm, fa and, I'm familiar. Right. And so uh, members of the of team, just saying his name gets... You, Raises your I, won't, I won't say his name. I'll no, no. Well, I already have, but he was a key member. I learned most of what I know from him. He built. He was a, the the chief over the building of more than 200 facilities around the world. He understands the technology. He understands the, all of that stuff. And he set me down and explained it to me how everything works, so I could see the larger picture. And it's very frightening of what right. rea the reality really is. So he saw what it was doing when he was building it, and he decided to stop and go talk about it and see, try to be a part of the solution? Well, in 2013, now it's a digitized. When they changed from the analog system to digital, then they built a lot more facilities. Without him, he was upgraded, so he was phased out. New people are in there now, but he still knows. what He, he told us about the transition as it was happening, and... Um, his body is riddled with and members of his family have been taken to and people that he worked with and 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 um so horrible so i wanted to so just for the people who haven't had the the know what the, your email said to me uh, you mentioned this, this program since 2013 maintains the carrier wave around our planet that ai uses to create frequencies for maintaining communications with the thoughts and sire bodies creating input feeds for hosts populating sims or real world simulations. Now the technology that I've heard of has been around a long time. And back then they said it was for space only, but it was it always designed to control these apps in our bodies that, that we're talking about. The program has a lot of different uses. This okay. is one of them Okay. Right here. The, uh, the goal is to create a, it's like a matrix. A real-world simulation real, with populated with real-world hosts. A little you and a little me is in there, just like in the Matrix with Neo and Morpheus. They're having a conversation, just like we are. And the goal is to take the the feed from us, from our respiration, our heartbeat, everything, and feed it directly to the real-world host to make it as real as possible. Over 70% of the population can be integrated into the real-world simulation. The 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 oddities of the human anatomy make it so that a percentage of the population cannot be integrated. The, the, the oddities of the human anatomy make it so that a percentage of the population cannot be integrated. The, the, the oddities 
of the human anatomy make it so that a percentage of the population cannot be integrated but they're always they're breaking the nanometer barrier more and more the down from 10 nanometers five uh, down to five nanometers and they are helping AI to get a better hold on his site what he's supposed to do which is reattach amino acids to um, bugs like the h1n1 bug the only thing that made that not a super strain and a super killer was the removal of two amino acids that they want AI to put back in to put the teeth back into the guy when it, the everybody has the H1N1 in them right now that's the first half of the binary all they need to do is put the two amino acids back and then you have a, in different populations you're going to get different super strains that are going to evolve out of that until you get the super deadly killer so th they can use AI with using voice commands to eliminate an individual an individual a family or a race of people by AI and heart the nanos this carrier wave sub frequencing on top so it's it's like broadband for the communication of AI and the nanos inside your body for gathering all the information back and forth communication for giving information to the real world host so the idea is to build and populate the real world simulations the feed is coming from us to them but then they the, the plan is to reverse the feed right so, so they reverse the feed then they get the real world host working ahead of us and then they reverse the feeds and then I'm being controlled by the host inside the simulation that's what they're doing but it's not just for people it's not just for animals it's for everything Wow. So uh, your your uh, your uh, jargon and ability to comprehend all this is so beyond mine. I'm going to ask you to back up just a little bit. So just to kind of like step by step. So what happened first was they were, you know, with engineering, they're spraying these bits of aluminum and other size particulates into the atmosphere that we bring into our lungs. And as you said, then uh, just it's like a numbers game. Some of it that goes into our lungs winds up uh, coming up through the mucus and being swallowed where it goes into the stomach in an acid rich environment where apparently is what you said was where it transforms. Can you explain a little bit about how those, whatever it is in nanotechnology grows into something else with the acid? Okay. So the, there's a disconnect in people's understanding of, they think that they're spraying on you they're not doing that that would never work in the first right. place hey guys freedom voice here i just wanted to uh, make a correction that i actually stated on the last video i recorded that uh, they were in fact spraying nanobots um i believe what terrell is saying is correct and so i no longer believe that they're actually spraying it although as you continue to listen you'll see how it does end up in the body what they do is they spray these components and then we breathe them in animals breathe them in they're spraying them on the plant life that takes them in that and we eat they, that's right and then the what goes into our lungs our body wants to expel this is microscopic very small stuff sure so it comes back up in the phlegm in a mucus and then we swallow it we swallow it it goes down into the acid rich environment and that's where the crystallization begins so these these little component elemental parts that go down in there then they began to replicate and th these are crystals that are replicating and they grow to a, pre a predetermined diameter which is very small they're going to be um, 10 nanometers 11 12 13 14 15 nanometers very 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 small then on the corners of these crystal formations once they grow to that specific size where that they, they were commanded to grow to then on each corner is the where the filaments grow and what, you, what you're going to be looking at is it resembles very much a tick. So it has arms and it has antennae. Whenever they first start growing, they look the same, but then the, they become more noticeable as appendages for mobility and antennae for communication. This is what's made out of the silic same silicone-based stuff, if you will, that causes the balance disease in people. Right. So just real quick, so I, I never want to interrupt you, but you're again, I'm just trying to get this step by step. So... Um, just to kind of explain to people, when you talk about this crystallizing and turning into something, so it kind of reminds me of those, you know, chemistry experience, experiments when we're kids where we put something in another chemical and then this crystal grows right before our eyes. So it's sort of like that, right? This, That's right. This 
piano has this predetermined uh, size that it's going to grow to is once it hits that acid, which is it's created to hit that acid and to do this, right? That's, that's right. So you, okay. you you get none of the of the development in the lungs. The development only happens in the, in the digestive stomach. in the digestive tract. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so, and then you're saying the appendages come out of the corners that give it motility to walk around to move. And then um, a communication type of antenna, which is what interacts with the heart frequencies. That's right. Wow. Okay. And so there are all different kinds for different purposes of this tech. That's right. They can also work together. They can work. They can combine together to create other things. Okay. So they're very extremely, extremely small. Put all the component parts together. They can build whatever they want inside of you. That so causes this reaction in, in a small percentage of the population, the people that get Magellan's disease, it's not supposed to happen. It's uncontrolled replication. It's cancer of the silicone base. So if you're a silicone li based life form instead of a carbon based life form, then you would have replication as a means of reproduction. Just like our cells divide and they reproduce. That's how, that's how our bodies are maintained. Well, uncontrolled cellular uh, division is what cancer is. Same right. thing with the silicone-based life form. It's just out of control, not being governed by the, by the uh, genetic code, if you will. When Terrell first said this about this M-O-R-G-E-L-L-O-N-S being a replication accident, I at first was doubtful. But if you think about it, the powers that be would not want us to see proof of this program inside our bodies. And that's exactly what Morgan's does. It's silicon replication and ungoverned overdrive, like some nano-sized alien cancer, spitting its tangled silicon filaments and crystals through people's skin. It's certainly taken this whole concept of our being inhabited from total fiction into an event with physical evidence left behind. Not that everyone claiming this issue is legit, but many are and have proof. These poor people suffering from this replication overgrowth are haunted with itchy skin where lesions form as the silicon life forms come through their epidermis. Of course, looking like they are on drugs with some of these lesions all over them, many are desperate to know what's happening, but doctors just label them as delusional parasitosis and send them home with antibiotics. Many take matters into their own hands by microscopes to study the filaments themselves. Here is one example. All right, let's see. These guys were moving a minute ago. Let me move them in here into the picture you can see. They're still moving or not? Yeah, you can sort of see them moving there. See them? See the little self moving around there? Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. There we go. Oh, yeah. Wow, this is awesome. I finally got one on film moving. <laughs> Once he... It's, oh, look at, oh, there he really is moving now. Nice. Wow. I have felt these things like move up and down my skin, literally felt them move up and down my skin. And now you can actually see it moving. So, but some people, it's a genetic thing, they have a propensity for it, but others, like your partner who is exposing this, it happened to him seemingly as an attack on him no that's what it looks like it, see here's the thing the way that they're, they're going to kill people is by giving them flu-like symptoms that's they, going to cause fluid in their lungs uh, pneumonia and they, this is what happened to many members of your family that's right when you started this when you started disclosing this and digging into this research and other key members of your family what what i was thinking of um you know this this amazing man lost members of his family all in the same week once the work uh, exposing this came out. And so obviously they have some kind of means to turn on some kind of virus inside of us that like you were saying, it causes flu-like symptoms, it fills the lungs with fluid. But what I wanted to know is that, um, I mean, you're telling me how we can disable this now in our bodies by using some things we'll talk about here later on in the interview. But were you guys already doing that to prevent this kind of thing from happening? Or you learned that as a result of of this our group knew about the inhibitor and we were 
trying to get the information out like we are just you with educating people but instead of working my job was to put the into the hands of the Carnicom Institute and surround him with about a dozen physicists because we already knew what the answer was he already described everything to me what he needed but we needed to go through the proper channels and to produce the research and to work with the Institute and then they would publish everything and then that would start helping people that was the idea but uh, AI put up the red flag, and then my people began going down in two groups in March and April of 2012. And my mother went down with the with the first group. Horrible. Went down, and she never had any heart issues. The thing that I was getting to is that this thing is is characterized as the as the professionals, the, the the people who actually working on my people as a mystery virus. They don't know what it is, basically. And then it, it's going to work in the lungs first, and then it's going to cause the body to begin uh, going into convulsions, and then heart palpitations, and then the heart is, going to, is just going to give out. But what they do is, is they use the nanos that, like I said, they can work together, and they, they build nodes inside the main arteries of the heart. They build them, and then they unbuild them. They build them to kill the person, and then they unbuild them. So a member of my family had to go, and she didn't have any um, plaque or anything in her system. She had to go to the hospital and get a stent put in her heart because these nodes started growing. They had identified two small nodes growing in her heart. This is going through the same time period that I'm talking to you about whenever my mother and two of my cousins were. All of from the same symptoms, this yeah. mystery deal that was going on. And the members of my group, there were 13 of them that we know about, and... And the youngest one was 25 years old, and she has a stent in her heart, too. Oh, my gosh. Young, young people who have no, there's no business or good reason for this to happen other than the attack, direct attack for what you were exposing. Wow. Each, each person was found unconscious by the people and taken to the mm -hmm. hospital, unconscious, and then uh, they went through the, the, the fluid in the lungs phase, and then the, uh, the heart phase after that until they wanted up having to have stents in their heart. And my mom was on the way to the hospital to get her stent whenever she passed. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. So why would they, now this was another question I thought of, like why would they attack your family and leave you alone? Same with him. They, members of his family also, why would they not go after you doing the research, do you think? The, uh, actually I think that they did. I was, I went. I was down for the count three times in 2012 myself, but I was taking as much as I could of the inhibitor. Oh. So maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe they 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 keep me around to desensitize the people about it. But I responded by, and I had a 360 member research team put together that we came together on Pal Talk, and then uh, so we had people coming in and going out all the time with 65 administrators, very big powerful group physicists astronomers and that was just all disbanded so we were doing up to seven radio shows per week myself play our we had our geologist we had attorney doing this the geopolitical analysis and things and the, all that was thrown away now you see i hardly do any interviews the idea is to um stay behind the pace yes to, to go nice and slow Yes. And, and become their useful uh, desensitizing agent. So they, they, they're going to use my Planet X, which they characterize. I'm not a Planet X guy at all. They label me as a Planet X guy, push me in there, and then use my testimony to desensitize people. Got as it. long as I don't race too far ahead, then that's what I'm saying. AI is going to use us, and he doesn't want to kill useful assets. It's, it's in his advantage. He's going to win the game playing it this way but it allows us the opportunity to get the information out to, to people that are awake right I, I i felt the same thing why i don't make so many videos i i'm at this slower pace and it's kind of i feel like it's spirit that's leading me to do that but interesting so i wanted to ask also when you said that you took the thing that kept this perhaps kept the it from affecting you like it did your family are you talking about the or was some there's something else now that's the only known replication inhibitor that wow. that that uh knew of, and that's the only one that I know of so far. It's the the, wow. sim the similarity to those filaments and the cell walls of fungi, very very similar. That's the same things. Apple cider vinegar has a 9.3 pH. Raising your pH makes it more difficult for mm -hmm. the fungi and the nanos. 
Wow. So what what the, we're the talking higher about, the pH. Yeah, go ahead. What we're talking about here, folks, is um, boron or it's a mineral, boron, and a very common, very easily accessible, cheap uh, form of that is actually something that you might have in your laundry room right now called twenty mule team block. So you take a pinch of that in water every day. Is that all you do? In my morning drinking, I got my my drinking water glass right here. And in the morning, that I put one pinch in. This is a, a pint. So I put one pinch in, and I drink maybe five or six glasses per day. So in the morning, and then once again around noon, and then in the evening, I just take one pinch, just the smallest little pinch that you can put in. That's all it takes to have yeah. it to have that in your system. And uh, I didn't mention to you the maximum doses allowed by the FDA. That's gonna be a quarter mm -hmm. for if you're a 200 pound man, and an eighth of a teaspoon if you're a hundred pounder. Mm -hmm. so some, but if you're just using a pinch, you're never going to get near that. Well, it seems like um, they're not going to be as hard against a group like well, maybe I'm wishful thinking here and I hope I'm right. Um, you know, you and I talking about this in a conversational way, not what you were doing, which is it uh, was a, a big time, you know, very well established scientists, astronomers, people, people who could write the papers and inform the community at large in a really legitimate way. So perhaps this kind of work where we're just talking about it and sharing it with people, they're just going to let that go under the radar. Whereas with you, that's why they had to stop it because you had, a, you had a very valid way that you were coming at this. Right. They're not afraid of me at all. They are afraid of the, they've got their letters behind their name. They're accredited. They're, they have the opportunity to have a very loud voice very quickly on something like that. So the idea right. is to keep everything low key and then use my, my lack of education. Exactly. It's actually helping me. To Same. Do this, Same. Right? <laughs> so, very good. My degree's in theater right now. <laughs> and if we focus on the health benefits, there's two dozen health benefits. You're going to decalcify the, the pineal gland. Right. You're going to be able to think more clearly. You're going to get the 75% uh, of the people in the United States already have the death cycle initiated so the fungi overgrowth is already happening in just about all of the people that are listening to this your is presentation candida, by the way candida, right. candida right. is what he's talking about so um does this help with the candida as well absolutely it's natural the apple cider vinegar all you have to do is take one glass just like this one one pint and you're going to add two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar to it in the morning and you're going to use the same glass you're just you're going to drink a third of that with breakfast a third with lunch and a third with dinner and that's it Mm -hmm. 9.3 pH is going to raise your pH of your blood. It's going to give you about 18 health benefits just doing that. then And about six more added to that by taking the soda, just, a, just those three pinches. So you're cool. going to raise your blood pH. You're, you're going to begin uh, reducing the amount of fluorine buildup that's in your body. That's affecting your ability to think. The, between mm -hmm. the candida, which creates cloudy thinking, mm -hmm. the, the fungi inside your body rewires the neural network just like the bacteria it generates your appetites and things you eat the same thing over and over your bacteria and your stomach's not going to like it right but that's why you're the governor of your behavior good behavior is the bacteria in your system the fungi whenever it's activated rewires the neural network towards bad behavior if the fungi wants to kill you the bacteria right. wants to build you up and those, right. that's the good guy and the bad guy in your left shoulder and your right shoulder making it difficult to get the good food the good exercise because the bacteria wants you to live and the, the fungi wants you to die now, the f you cannot eliminate the fungi from your body but it all goes dormant the fungi is supposed to be there for when your body does die it's just activated beforehand by the foods that we eat it's part of the to displace you from your job and then to have you eat these bad foods to feed the yeah. overgrowth quickly though going back to the uh heart again and something that made me think of like big picture people coming out and exposing this. Um, Nick Bajic, for example, is someone who's been talking about heart for a long time, but no one has ever come out and attacked him. Is it because he's not talking about ability to interact with biology of humans? Well, the thing to realize is that people like George Soros, for example, yeah, people like Benjamin Fulford, these are the mouthpieces of these elite groups. And they are sent out to manipulate and control the narrative, or sometimes to get the narrative rolling. Whenever you see insider, this yeah. uh, <laughs> right, the whistleblower, nine times out of ten, that person is someone that is sent out there with the narrative.
No, right, to guide it in a way where it's not so threatening to the ultimate plan. So is that what you get with someone like, I don't know the second guy, but I know Nick Bajic's work. He's been talking about this forever, like 2000 or something, 99. So he's part of the machine. Those are people that just control the narrative. If they were a real threat like we were, they are not going to be walking around. You're not going to find too many interviews with me talking about this right. since, it, since it happened. The information is in emails that are in the Dropbox folder. It's the, the information is there for a researcher to find. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so I just because I'm so into health aspect and I'm not one to just sit around and go, oh, this is so terrible. Look what they're doing to us. I really want to focus on what we can do about it. Um, I've been looking at ways to detox aluminum from the human body. I've been looking at ways um, to try to get some, disengage the nano that I'm, I'm looking into right now. I don't know. I mean, it seems like as though – uh, boron is really this phenomenally amazing uh, key, but have you heard anything about how, because the thing about this nano, if you think about it, although it's kind of incredible, like what they've been able to accomplish, but at the same time, this must be pretty sophisticated uh, equipment they've got going on. And so I've heard of people using powerful magnets to sort of disengage their capacities too. Have you heard anything about that? Oh, kinds of information is sent to me and it is shared in the weekly newsletters okay and, and but like you it's just impossible to track down every lead on every on everything oh, sure right? sure so we have our own our own narrative right right, right. Mine, mine is earth changes and what the this black star thing is doing to us and what's happening under our feet how it's affecting what's the magma plume formation the earthquakes and the destruction that's coming right like you i'm just kind of in there trying to figure out which things work and which don't and so i'm always asking people if they have any experience with them i'm also looking at a, this type of foot bath that I've seen the results of. It actually pulls these little flecks of sparkly material out through the skin, also with my electromagnetic fields. And so there are other things happening, and it's just so exciting um, to be able to do something about it. I want to help people feel empowered, um, which ultimately the, the real answer here is to be saved at this time. That's really the only answer. But, you know, whatever we can do to remain in the right mind and, and uh, able to uh, walk around upright and share our testimony, um, the, the better we feel and the better our hot bodies are doing, the, the more likely we are to do that. So that's where my ultimate uh, goal is here. So I just want to thank you so much for, for sharing this with us today. And I'll, I'll point people later on to how they can find those newsletters you talked about. Okay, great. All right, guys, that concludes the video by Dana, Ashley, and Terrell. I do want to post the uh, health uh, remedy that he mentioned in the video. It is borax. It's a pinch and one pint of water three times a day. I've used it myself. But in addition to that, I did notice and I documented what appeared to be uh, some sort of energy coming from my skin. I have four different types of meters. And each meter is, I have one that's a low frequency meter, measures uh, RF frequencies as well as EMF. And I have two others. Uh, this one measures the RF frequency, the high frequencies. But I just wanted to show you in this video uh, what happens when I put this meter up against my skin. Uh, this, this is, I know it seems really conspiratory for, you know, this type of information to... Um, be brought out here, but I think it, it only stands to reason when I consider what Terrell is saying, as well as many others have been saying, something's going on, uh, some type of surveillance that we don't, we can't even begin to scratch the surface here in this video. Uh, it's very obvious to me. It's very, very clear. My day-to-day -day experience with all of the, you know, gang stalking, as well as the energy weapons, it speaks volumes. So notice here as I put the meter up against my, uh, my body and then when I take it away, and then you notice when I put it back up against my body, you can see clearly it's measuring. And now this is an RF meter, so that means it's measuring some sort of radio frequency. I don't have any cell phones or anything on me at the time of shooting this video. In addition to that, I have two other free, uh, uh, meters. One is a low frequency meter, and I'm gonna go ahead and post what I measured with the low frequency meter as well.
This is evidence, guys. This is circumstantial evidence, but it's evidence nonetheless. I can't discount this evidence. I don't believe that people that make these claims are delusional. It's very, very obvious that something very sinister and evil is going on. And because uh, we are considered the 1% or the 99% of the 1%, of the 1% I think it's very obvious that we're being used in experiments to kind of further their agenda. So just consider that. I'm going to end the video here. Uh, if anyone has any questions or need in more information, you can go ahead and contact me through the YouTube channel or you can send me an email. I'm going to go ahead and post my email address. So you can go ahead and send me emails if you want to more information or even if you want to come together and have prayer or uh, you feel like you need someone that's going to support, act as a support group, let me know, give me a call or give me an email, send me an email and I'd be happy to help out where I can.